So you've sewn the front of your pillow together, you've smoothed out puckers, ended off well, and you've gone to the iron and pulled as you pressed. Step number eight now says, on the wrong side of this pillow front, use marking guide number two to mark some stitching lines on all four sides. Make sure that they are parallel and equidistant from all four edges. So what I'm going to do, if I've cut out correctly, and I've sewn perfectly. When I put marking guide number two down at the bottom of my pillow front, a pencil's width should stick out. But in this case, something wasn't exactly perfect, so I need to lower the template so that I can fit my pencil there. And then I'm going to mark a line along one edge, angled pencil. And I'm gonna do this on all four sides, lower it to the bottom, make sure a pencil's width sticks out, angled pencil. I wanna draw, again, the lightest line that I can see, uh, not too dark. When you're finished marking all four lines on the wrong side, do not cut. Do not cut. Many students make the mistake of then cutting on these lines. This is, these are your stitching lines, and if you cut on them, you have to start all over again. All right, so yours might even be a little lighter. Now the directions tell you to choose your backing fabric. Your teacher's going to have a cart with some choices on it. You're going to choose the bolt of fabric of the color that you want and your teacher's gonna cut you a chunk, trying not to waste fabric. So you'll have to go have a chunk of the solid backing fabric cut for you. And now the directions to say, say, place the right side of the pillow front with the right side of the backing fabric. Remember, the solid fabrics are the same on both sides. So we're gonna choose this side to be the good sides. The good sides are inside, the wrong sides are outside, and the directions tell you to pin, and there's a picture of eight pins, one diagonally in each corner. Now look at what I do. I use my thumb to help me measure so that when I'm finished pinning, it will not stick out and extend past the pillow front. What I don't want to do is have the pin stick out, and then when it's time to cut, I'm gonna wind up cutting through that pin, all right? So I need to make sure that my pins are within the pillow front. One on each corner and one on each side. So you remember that pinning requires you to go in and out. In and out. Those are the hard ones, the thick ones and in and out, so eight pins. Then it tells you to use some masking tape and put a three inch piece on the side that you would like to consider the bottom. We can estimate three inches if we hold out four fingers and we lay the tape over four fingers, that's about three inches of masking tape. So you can pick whatever side, maybe you want this to be the bottom of the pillow, maybe you want this to be the bottom of the pillow, it's your choice. Okay, so put that masking tape on. You are going to be cutting the backing fabric to be the exact same size as the front. So you're gonna use shears. You're using your pillow front as a guide to cut them to be the same size. Any pins by accident are sticking out, you need to move them so that you don't dull the shears. Once you've done that, you need to think about what color thread you're gonna be sewing with. You might wanna stick with the color you initially chose, or you might wanna to switch to the pink color because you've got more pink now in your pillow. It's your choice. So you have gotten your needle, double threaded needle ready, and you've tied a knot at the end, all right? Right-handed sewers will start sewing um, on the left side of the tape. So take the bottom of the pillow, Flip it around so it's now the top of the pillow for sewing purposes. Righties will start on the left-hand side of the tape. 
lefties will start on the right hand side of the tape. It has to do with having something to hold while you're sewing. So you're going to sew. You're going to make nice touching stitches at the corner. You're going to sew and make nice touching stitches at the corner and eventually you're going to run out of thread. I ran out of thread over here. So you're going to re-thread with new thread, overlap a little, continue, nice touching stitches at the corner, and do a nice teeny tiny tight secure strong end off stitch here.